And here's what I want you to see, just a couple things today. First of all, is that Jesus is primarily concerned about our love for him, not our usefulness to him. Now, indeed, God wants us to be useful to his son in this ministry, but primarily God is not concerned, and his son Jesus is not concerned about our usefulness to him as much as he is about our love for him. And so three times Jesus just asked Peter this question, Peter, do you love me? That's the point. Jesus is going after Peter's heart. He's saying, Peter, do you love me? Because Peter's sin against Jesus was not an issue of cowardice, it was an issue of lovelessness. This is why Peter denied him. Sin is always the vandalization of a relationship, not primarily the violation of rules. And so when Peter sins against Jesus, when he denies Jesus, at the heart of it is a lack of love for Jesus Christ. Yeah, possibly some, obviously some doubt, but really at the heart of it is this issue of love. And so because it was an issue of love, his restoration needs to be an issue of love. Jesus is calling Peter to repentance, and that repentance is not going to be a commitment to better behavior. It is going to be a commitment to deeper love for the person of Jesus. Now, I, I believe as driven people... We're most often focused not primarily on our love for Jesus, but on our usefulness to him. And so uh, we can get very caught up in the success of our ministries, the growth of our church, the visibility of our platforms, but we're so concerned about our usefulness to Jesus. And it's possible that in our passion to be useful to Jesus and in our own glory hunger, our desire to be acknowledged and recognized for that service, it's possible that we end up doing ministry without a real love for Jesus. That we're engaged in all sorts of things to make us more useful to him, but doing it without a genuine love for him. This is the problem of the church in Ephesus in Revelation chapter 2, verse 4, when Jesus says he compliments them for all these incredible things that they're doing, and then he says, but I have this against you. You've abandoned the love you had at first, and if it doesn't change, I'm going to remove your lampstand. The only ministry that Jesus finds acceptable to him is ministry that's birthed out of a real love for him out of a real passion for him. This is primarily what he's after. Todd opened up with that passage in Matthew 7. We've done all these things to be useful in the kingdom of God. Jesus says, but there's something missing. I don't know you, and you don't know me. We don't have a relationship with each other. Jesus is primarily after our love in all ministry that we're to engage in is to be rooted and motivated in a deep love for Jesus. Now, this is not Peter's first encounter with the risen Christ. We're told in the book of Corinthians that Peter had this encounter with Jesus, that he had a meeting with him before this meeting with him. And it was in that meeting with him that I believe it's not even recorded for us in Scripture. It's almost like it is so private, so intimate, so sacred, it can't even be captured by human words. I imagine there was incredible weeping that took place there as Jesus tells Peter, I still love you, Peter. I still have plans for you, Peter. You're, you're, you still have a, a place in my heart, Peter. And he extended tremendous mercy and gentleness and forgiveness to Peter over this. And I think it was that, that affirmation of Jesus' love, continued love for Peter, that brings Peter to a place where he can honestly look at Jesus and say, you know I love you. Because the only thing that's going to fuel a sustained love for Jesus in your heart is a revelation of Jesus' love for you. See, love for Jesus, passion for Jesus is not a personality thing. I used to always think it was a personality thing. I would see people worshiping Jesus and going hard after Jesus and crying out to Jesus and weeping before Jesus and professing great love for Jesus. And I was like, it's a personality thing. That's just not my personality. I'm not outwardly emotional in that way. And then I read the Bible and discover that it's not a personality thing, it's a revelation thing. That when you see that he is the one who loved me and gave himself up for me, then love is born in our hearts. As we, as, as we have the love of Jesus revealed to us, then love for, for Jesus grows in us. As the love of Jesus is revealed to us, love for Jesus grows in us. And so there needs to be a crying out to God Give me greater love for your son. 
A deep love for Jesus is what sustains our ministry. I love what Tozer said. He said, the great of this world are those who simply loved God more than others did. Because when there's that deep, sustained love for Jesus, born in a revelation of the love of Jesus for you, that sustains ministry even when we're not seeing results. Even when we're not seeing results. Jesus, secondarily, is concerned about our love for his people and not their usefulness to us. So he says, Peter, do you love me? Peter Peter says, you know I love you. He says, feed my sheep, tend my lambs, feed my sheep. When Jesus talks about feeding his sheep, he's talking about loving and caring for what is precious to him, that these are his sheep that he has laid his life down for. And he says, Peter, if you love me, So here's the fuel. The fuel for your ministry is that you would love me. And the fruit of your ministry is that you would love those that are precious to Jesus. And that you would empty and pour out your life in caring for them and loving them and taking care over their spiritual formation. Now, i got to be honest with you. I think uh, in in my ministry, there have been many times where I become more audience-minded than people-focused audience-minded, who's coming, how many people are coming, are they receiving my preaching, Um, how uh, audience-minded or platform-driven, these are the kinds of things that can begin to settle in. And as a pastor, there have been many times where I was more concerned about the sheep pen than I was about the sheep, about how, how does our church look, about its style, about its strategy, about its shape, about its size, about its visibility, about its style, all these things. More concerned about the sheep pin than I am about the actual sheep. This is why most staff retreats are all about style and all about systems and all about strategy instead of saying, hey, we're going to come, we're going to pray and ask for a greater love for Jesus and we're going to intercede for our people. We're going to take three days and we're going to pray for the spiritual needs of our congregation. Primarily, we want to love Jesus. Secondarily, we want to love his people and not be caught up in their usefulness to us. There is a danger of being driven by success so that it's possible that you do ministry without a true love for people. And seriously, if you lose a love for Jesus and you lose a love for people, all you have left is ambition. And it's, typic- it's usually sinful ambition, prideful ambition. And when you are driven by ambition, you start using people to build up your ministry and make a name for yourself instead of laying down your life to build up people. I know this is a massive temptation for me when I first moved to New York City to start Apostles Church. I felt like there was a lot of money being invested in this plant. I felt like there was a lot of people uh, watching to see if it was going to work, and I knew that my reputation was on the line. And so because I was concerned about my reputation, people became objects of usefulness to me instead of me saying, God, how can I be useful in their life to help them? And I never forget just putting demands upon people and expectations upon people that were unfair. Why? Because I had to succeed. And my only hope for success was these people actually get busy and make it happen. And those were hidden, unnamed motivations in my heart that began to surface. Without a true love for Jesus, without a true love for people, ambition is all you have left. And when you have ambition, you end up driving people instead of serving them and loving them. 